Now we're going to discuss a very interesting problem, YCAT 4.D26. And as always, we have a distillation column, which I'm going to draw. And this distillation column has two feeds. So we have feed one, and we have the second feed. And now uh, we also have the distillate. And what's interesting here is typically you have a total condenser and a partial reboiler, but in this problem we have a partial condenser and a total reboiler. So here um, all of the all the vapor goes in through the reboiler, the condenser, sorry, and some of it is sent back to the column, and the rest comes out as distillate. And this is a acetone ethanol distillation, and the distillate is 85% acetone. Now, on the reboiler side, we have a total reboiler, and so the liquid comes out, and some of it is sent to the reboiler, where, the, where all of it is then sent back up as vapor. The remainder is the, the, the bottoms, and this has a composition of 10% acetone. Let's talk about the feeds. The first feed we have is superheated vapor at a flow rate of 100 moles per minute. And the composition is 50% acetone. know that for every 20 moles of vapor, it, we require one mole of liquid to evaporate in order to lower the temperature to desaturation temperature. Next, we have a second feed, which is a saturated liquid at 150 moles per minute. And the composition is 35% acetone. Now, what we're tasked with finding is the V bar over B ratio, the minimum ratio. Now, to do that, we need to find all the internal flow rates. So, let's start by just labeling everything. So, here we have V, here we have L. And then for the bottom, we're going to use V bar and L bar. And obviously we have V. And because we have two feeds, in between the two feeds, there's going to be a first set of internal streams, which will label V prime and L prime. Now, the next step is to perform a total mass balance. And so we know that F1 plus F2 is equal to D plus B. And since we have we know F1 and F2, we have two unknowns, so we need a second equation to solve it. And we can do that with a component mass balance. So we have Z1 F1 plus Z2 F2 is equal to yd d plus xb b. Now when you actually sub substitute in the numbers, you get 2, 250 is equal to d plus b. And over here you get 0 0.35 times 150 plus 0 0.50 times 100 is equal to 0 0.85 D plus 0 0.10 B.
And so when you solve this, you will obtain the values v, sorry, d is equal to 103.3 moles per minute, and d is equal to 146.6 moles per minute. Unfortunately, now we can't make any further progress because obviously we don't have V bar over B min and the flow rates at the top are driven by equilibrium so we don't really have a way to calculate them. So the next step here is to calculate the feed lines. And, and as a reminder, the feed lines are given by the equation y is equal to q over q minus 1 x plus zf 1 minus q. The first step uh, in calculating the feed line is to determine the value of q. Now, q is the feed quality, and it is the fraction of the stream that remains liquid after it's been fed into the column. So, so for F2, F2 is a saturated liquid, so the whole stream is liquid, and so Q2 is equal to 1. Now, Q1 is a bit more complicated because it is a superheated vapor, and so not only is none of it going to be liquid when it's introduced into the, the tower, it's also going to convert some of the liquid into vapor. And so because of that, this Q is actually a negative value. And the negative value is going to be dependent on how much, on how much liquid is, is evaporated. So in this case, for every 20 moles of feed, one mole of liquid is evaporated. And so the value of Q is going to be Q1 is equal to minus 1 over 20, which is equal to minus 0 0.05. Now let's calculate the feed lines. For Q2, for uh, the second feed, since it's a saturated vapor, this term is going to be, uh, this denominator is going to be 0, and so the feed line is going to be a vertical line that passes through the point z equals 0 0.35. So that would be about here. And so we can say that we can show. And so the feed line is just going to be a vertical line like this. Now for the second, for the first feed, the equation is minus 0 0.05 over minus 1.05x plus 0 0.50 over 1.05. And so when you, when you, when you, if you calculate this out, this gives you 0 0.04 76x plus 47.62. So this slope here is absolutely tiny, so it's very, very close to a horizontal line. We know that it will pass through the point z equals 0 0.50, so we can go ahead and draw that. We also know that the y-intercept is 47.62. Well, 0 0.4762. And so it's going to be roughly here. And so we, we just draw a quick, a quick line. It's going to look like this. The next step is to estimate V bar over B min by examining the graph. Now we know that at V bar over V min, or the minimum reflux ratio, the operating lines will form a pinch point. So upon examination, there's two points where they can pinch. Here, 
or here. Now, at V bar over V min, we know that the lower operating line is going to have its steepest possible slope. So, at, so because of that, we know that the pinch point to choose is this one. So we're going to draw, uh, we're going to draw an operating line that starts at x b equals zero point ten, and it's going to run from there to the pinch point. So this is not the best line, but you get the idea. And so after that, we know that the operating line equation is is L bar over V bar x plus L bar over V bar minus 1 xb. And so by measuring the slope of this operating line, we can find L bar and V bar. And then after that, it's a fairly trivial calculation to find V bar over b. So let's do that. So if you take this operating line and you measure it, you'll find that the slope is approximately equal to 3. So L bar over V bar is approximately 3.0. Now, the next step, obviously, is to just calculate V. So we know that, so from that, if we rewrite it, we can we know that L is equal to 3.L times V bar. We also know that L is equal to V bar plus B. So if we substitute this in, we'll find that B is equal to 2, 2 times V bar. And so therefore, V bar over B is equal to 1 half. Okay, so we know that 3 times V bar over V min is equal to 1.5, and now we need to find the other flow rates. We know that B stays the same because it's still 146.6 moles per minute, and so uh, we'll have to back calculate. So we know V bar over B is equal to 1.5, and therefore V bar is equal to 1.5 B which is equal to 1.5 times 146.66, which is equal to 220. Next, uh, L bar is equal to V plus B, which is equal to 2.5 B. And this is equal to 366.66. Taking all that, uh, we find that L over V bar is equal to 1.66. And so now we can trace the operating line. So it's going to, once again, start from 0 0.10. And it's going to approximately run from... 0 0.10 to 0 0.4 and 0 0.6. So, so this would be here. And so our operating line is going to look something like this. The next step is to calculate the uh, intermediate operating line between the bottom operating line and the top operating line. This one uh, you uses the the flow rates V prime and L prime, so we need to calculate them. We can do that by taking into account the mass balance at the tray, at the feed tray with the saturate liquid, which is this operating line. So if we look at it, we'll see that we'll see that the liquid V prime is coming in. We have the feed F2, then we have liquid L bar. We also have V bar and V prime. Since the feed is completely saturated, we know that L prime is, is plus F2 is equal to L bar. That means that 
from the mass balance, V bar is equal to V prime. So we have, we have L bar and F2, and so L bar minus F2 is equal to L prime. L bar is 366.66 66 minus 150 is equal to 216.66. So uh, the L bar, the L prime over V prime ratio is equal to 216.66 over 220, which is equal to 0.984. And so on this graph, it would be almost parallel with the XY line, but slightly, but slight with a slightly smaller slope. And so it would look something like, like this. And so the intersection point is here. Now the, the third operating line, we could, we could calculate it by calculating the flow rates at the top of the column. But we don't need to do that because we know that it has to pass through the point uh, 0 0.90. Sorry, the point 0 0.85, which is here. And since we have, it needs to intersect with the middle operating line at this feed line, then we can simply just trace the line. Right. And now we're ready to step down using the McKeff Daily method. Now, because we have a Murphy efficiency of 0 0.75, we can only travel 75% of the distance to the equilibrium line. So uh, I'm going to start here, and I'm going to use a different, a different, pen, different highlighter color. So I'm going to travel horizontally, 75% of the distance, and then tra step down, hit the operating line, and keep doing this. Like so. And I'm going to assume the feeds are ideally placed, so I'm not going to... All right, so with a Murphy efficiency of roughly 0 0.75, we can find that we can see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Nine, nine trays. Now, we have a partial condenser, so that means that the top, the top equilibrium stage is simply the condenser, so that's one less tray, and so the, the answer is eight trays.